What's up guys, today I wanted to go over how to run GPT Neo X 20B through Hugging Face, including running on multiple devices, meaning two or more GPUs or a GPU and a CPU. So if we scroll on to the requirements, as you can see in the readme, ideally you have one or more GPUs that totals 48 gigabytes of VRAM or more. In my case, I have two 3090s. However, even if you don't have enough VRAM, you can still run the model. It'll just take much longer. For example, I try running with just one 3090 in my CPU rather than running on both 3090s, and it took around 10 minutes to generate 100 tokens versus taking less than 30 seconds if you run on both GPUs, in my case. The way that I do it in the code, you need to have roughly 50 gigabytes of RAM or you could have some swap to make up for that if you don't have 50 gigabytes of RAM in order to download the weights in either Float 16 or Brain Float 16. You're gonna need close to 100 gigabytes if you want to download the full weights the way that I do in the code. Important to note if you want to use Brain Float 16, which I recommend, is you need to make sure that your CPU and GPU support it. For example, the 30 series Ampere NVIDIA cards are the first series to support Brain Float 16. The rest of the readme just goes over how to install and options for running, and I'll go over that now and go over what's going inside internally in the code. So as usual, the first thing we need to do is we need to clone the repo. We can do that with using HTTPS or SSH if we have our key set up. Let's go ahead and do that. I have the key set up. So we copied that. And we need to go ahead and get clone. So let's go ahead and paste the command to get clone that. And let's go ahead and enter the folder now. So CD, GPT, and we're entered. So now that we're in the repo, we need to go ahead and install the packages and environment that we have in the M file that we can see the env file. So to do that, we will copy the command in the repo and we'll scroll down and it's conda env create dash f and then env.yaml. And now that's done. So now let's enter the environment by doing conda activate gpt and we are now inside of the conda environment. So the code itself is pretty simple with regards to running. We do Python main, and we can see the flags that we have by doing dash H. And so the options are FP16, and that will download the weights in floating point 16, and then BF16, which will download the weights in brain float 16. And this is important to remember that if you don't want to use either of these options, you need to have roughly 100 gigabytes of RAM or plenty of swap in order to download the weights. Well, let's now take a quick look at the code and then we'll go ahead and run it. So right here is where we pass the arguments in and then we run the main function, which if we scroll up, we can see is right here. So we have the name of the weights, which is GBT Neo X 20 B. And then we have what's weights path. So this is what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be downloading the weights, loading it into memory and then saving it. And this is because we need to load the weights a special way in order to run them on two or more devices. So all this does is it checks if a path exists. If it doesn't, we make it and then we save the weights. And it's a pretty simple function. We just, uh, if, it's, if the argument for FP16 was passed, we save it as float16. Or brain flow, we save it as brain flow. Else we do the full fat weights. Going back to the main function. So what we're going to be using to making all this possible is we're using Hugging Face Accelerate. And that's going to allow us to load different layers of the model on two different devices, including the CPU if needed. And so what we're doing here is we init the empty weights that allows us to then run functions later on that will um, split the weights over multiple devices. Then we check if your GPUs have BrainFlow 16 supported, and if they do, we run it with BrainFlow 16 or we run it with Float 16, but the function is the same. We're doing inferred auto device map. 
So what this does is using the empty weights init we have here, it's going to figure out if you can fit the model on one GPU, two GPUs, or you need to split it on one GPU and a CPU, or maybe you need two GPUs and still a CPU to get the model completely loaded. And after you have that, you'll have a device map. And that will say that we need to put layers, let's just say there's 10 layers, one through five on GPU one, and then we need to put the rest on GPU two. So that tells us where we're going to load the layers at. And then for right at this function right here, we load the weights that we saved earlier and load them as type brain float 16 here or float 16 here. So at this point, you have the weights loaded on multiple devices, uh, either as brain float 16 or float 16. And uh, you're pretty much done. So the rest is pretty simple or at least very similar to uh, traditional methods. We have the prompt, we tokenize it, and uh, then we generate using normal hugging face generate functions and then decode it using uh, normal hugging face uh, tokenizer decode and then you can print it. I'm going to now run this code with a full fat weight so you see it really takes up roughly 100 gigabytes of RAM. I'll speed it up a bit so you don't have to wait with me uh, and then I'll show the output. So here I am about to run the code. We have the RAM resources right here. We can see both GPU 0 and GPU 1, both 3090s right here. And we'll be able to watch the RAM go up at roughly around 100 because I'm going to use the full weights. And then we'll see these get about maxed out as well. So let's go ahead and do that now and I'll fast forward as I said. So we can see the RAM right now, really hitting 30 gigabytes. The model from our regular RAM, that means that we have loaded the model and have uh, ran it to disk. And now as you can see, the VRAM for the 3090 is starting to go up. So, yep, we're almost done with that point. And it's uh, important to note that you're not going to have to do that very long part every single time. And we are done. So it took four minutes and seven seconds to run from, uh, from start to finish with downloading the weights and then uh, reloading them using this method. Uh, but it should be much quicker to run after having already loaded the weights. So let's go ahead and uh, do that uh, just to see how long it takes. So we're gonna run it now, but after having already the weights be stored, and let's do that now. And it's already going to the GPU. So as we can see, it took 49 seconds, uh, much quicker than the four minutes. But important to note is that if you were to use this in something like an API, you already had the model loaded. It's still gonna take a decent bit of time uh, without any optimization, but much closer to the 10 second uh, area than the uh, minute area once you have it loaded like an API. So this is very exciting. We are now able to use Hugging Face's nice friendly format with the uh, GPT Neo 20 billion parameter model, which is uh, pretty cool. If you have any exciting ideas for these large GPT models and need an engineer, I just want to say I'm available for short and long term hire. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you liked the video, please consider leaving me a like. If you would like to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe as I typically cover topics related to AI and the newest in technology. Lastly, consider joining the Discord if you have any questions or want to be a part of any interesting discussions related to the latest technology. Thank you so much for watching and please have a great day.